Welcome back to Business Ethics. My name is Tom, and in this unit, we are going to talk a little bit about Chapter 6. Um, chapter 6 is the place in the book where they start to get into ethical theory. As you are aware, we've already kind of gone over the main ethical theories that we are going to be considering um, uh, with the Republic, Plato and Thrasymachus, and then also with Aristotle. So what I wanna do for this unit is just highlight some of the terms and features that um, come up in this unit and um, uh, and then just kind of talk about them and how they relate to what we've already talked about and, and some things moving forward. So um, let me go ahead and um, one main um, concept that we've already talked about a little bit in Aristotle mostly is the idea of teleology. Um, a telos is simply put a thing's aim or purpose, right? So lots of things have a telos. Um, you know, um, you can talk about like living things, you know, um, they have the aim or purpose of being healthy or survival if it's like an animal or whatnot. Um, and then we talk about like artifacts, right? The telos of the house is to provide shelter, these kinds of things. Um, and then um, you can also talk about, you know, like humans, what's the telos of a human being? And um, and that's a big topic, right? Um, what's really our purpose? Um, and, uh, you know, it, it ties into ethics because, you know, a lot of people think that our central purpose is to be good or to be a good person, right? This is where it factors into Aristotle. Um, Specifically for our course, the idea of a telos we've been talking about, right, right this um, debate between purpose-driven business versus profit-driven business. Um, they have differing accounts of what the telos or the real purpose of business is, right? Um, one thinks that it's to fulfill some kind of social need or social responsibility, and the other one thinks that it's to earn a profit, right? Um, so. So that's a term just to kind of um, help us refine that idea and that aspect of the debate that we've been talking about. Um, the second term is relativism. Um, if you recall, Thrasymachus's position is a kind of relativism, right? So generally speaking, relativism when it comes to ethical theory is the idea that um, ethical statements like you ought not to kill or something like this, or you ought not commit murder um, are true only relative to a particular system of beliefs, which is to say they're not universally true. Um, they're only true given a certain kind of context. So a, a good example of this is cultural relativism, right? That the idea of cultural relativism when it comes to ethics that there's not really general ethical, universal ethical principles that everyone has to recognize. It's just given a particular culture, um, you have certain norms in place, right? Um, and that's kind of exhaustive of what ethical principles, um, uh, where, where they kind of um, are grounded, so to speak, right? But you can also have subjective relativism, meaning you have your own beliefs um, that have to be consistent only, or your own ethical beliefs that are only consistent with your own um, personal outlook, this kind of thing. Um, so just to, that's a helpful label to have here. The third term that I go over in my notes is egoism. Now, this is quite an interesting one. Um, ethical egoism is the idea that, um, you really should um, uh, serve your own interests, right? You should serve your own ego in a certain sense, right? Um, a self-centered kind of ethical outlook. Now, um, there are different ways to think about this. Um, so we've already seen this to a certain extent in um, Thrasymachus, right? Thrasymachus thinks you really need to be kind of out for yourself um, and it's okay to screw over other people in order to get ahead because everyone else is trying to do it and to think otherwise is to really kind of delude yourself. Um, so there is kind of like the immediate idea of ethical egoism where, you know, really what's good is just to, to just do whatever you want to do, right? Um, but there are more refined ideas of ethical egoism and um, some of them say that really it leads to what's called like a paradoxical altruism. Now altruism is doing the right thing and helping other people just for the sake of doing it without any kind of interest for yourself. 
And um, the idea is that if you really think through what is in your best interest, you will see that helping other people is in your best interest, right? Um, if you lift up people in your community, then your community is better. And if your community is better, then your, um, uh, you know, uh, lifestyle is better, right? Is your, your, your living conditions are improved, right? Um, and in that you can see this with all kinds of relationships, right? Like taking care of your family is better because then they can take care of you and, um, you know, and it makes you happier and all kinds of things like this. So, um, I think um, when it comes to the debate about, you know, um, uh, profit versus purpose driven business, um, one thing you see with the idea of egoism is that, um, or one of the motivations for being a purpose driven business is that actually it will serve your interests better, right? Like you'll have a better sustainable business if you, um, you know, think about the interest of all these stakeholders, then actually you'll be more successful, right? So you kind of get this paradoxical, um, uh, you know, advancing of your self-interest by looking towards the interests of others, right? Okay, so those are just three terms that I think that are relevant. They go over a lot of stuff in this chapter that I don't think all of it is that mm, pertinent for us. Um, so, but there are two main ethical theories that we really should know about and that they can kind of provide a little bit of context. Um, so when we're looking at, you know, virtue ethics, we're talking about Plato and Aristotle, both of them really kind of fit into the virtue um, uh, category. And what's distinctive about virtue ethics is that they look at moral character, right? And I find them to be particularly um, helpful for looking at business because, when we're thinking about a business, we're thinking about a business as a whole, right? Um, you want your business to be a good business and to run successfully and all these kinds of things. Um, uh, so, uh, and that's the that's the unit of measurement that they're looking at in um, in in uh, virtue ethics is the individual as a whole, right? Being a good person, right? Um, not necessarily doing the right thing all the time, right? But um, doing the right thing more often and having the habits and dispositions to do those things, right? Um, now, when it comes to the two theories, these other two theories, they're called deontology and consequentialism. Um, they're focused on the action itself, right? What's the right thing to do in this particular situation? Or what's the right thing to do? What are the principles of what we should and should not do, right? And so they look at actions rather than character. Right. Um, so let's just kind of talk about them in brief. Um, deontology is basically it, it means the study of obligation. And so being a deontologist, um, ethically speaking, um, you basically think of ethics as the study of obligation. Right. So um, you think of ethical principles in terms of things that um, you know, uh, what would you say, um, principles that you have to adhere to. And it's about outlining those principles and that's it. Now, one of the most famous deontologists is Kant and Kant's view is basically um, something along the lines that you should only do what can be um, thought of as a universal principle. Right. And so when it comes to certain actions like that, we typically think are bad, right? Um, murder, theft, lying, these kinds of things. The reason why he thinks that they, those are not moral acts um, is because they cannot be, um, they cannot provide the rule by which we all act, right? And, and that's from a logical perspective. So if lying was the general rule that everyone lied whenever they wanted to, um, you know, avoid the truth, then everyone would lie, right? And if everyone lied, then you wouldn't really assume that people are being honest when you're talking to them. So then it would be much more difficult for you to tell a lie, right? In fact, for Kant, he would say that it's impossible, right? Lying could not be the rule. It always has to be the exception to the rule, right? That's how lying works. Um, and same thing with stealing, right? It only works, you can only steal if the practices of private property are in place and people generally respect that, 
right? And once you have that, then you can, you know, kind of um, uh, make an exception to it when you, you think it will serve your interests, but it cannot work as a rule, right? Um, now, um, there's a lot to say about Kant, but um, what the general kind of characteristic of deontology is that um, when it comes to these kinds of principles, like if you realize that like stealing is wrong based on this, this idea, this analysis of these principles, um, then it's never okay to steal, right? It's always going to be the wrong thing to do, um, no matter what the circumstances are. And so the character of deontology is much more like there are ethical principles that you need to respect all the time, no matter what, right? Um, and where this kind of really rings true for lots of people when it comes to things like civil rights, human rights, these kinds of things. Um, because, you know, when it comes to like torturing, you know, people in Guantanamo Bay or something like this, um, oftentimes, you know, human rights advocates say, I don't care what you think this person did, you cannot treat a person like this, right? Like, no matter what the context is, don't do that. That's not okay, right? Like waterboarding is just bad, right? Um, it's like an absolute kind of thing. And that's the way deontology kind of functions. And um, I think it meets up with our um, intuitions in that way. And then where it kind of connects with business ethics is when it comes to human rights violations, like we talk about, um, we'll see you know, cases where, you know, people are using like child labor in other countries, companies that are, are really um, well known in the states. And we tend to think, well, um, that's bad, that's wrong, right? And, you know, you might, someone might argue, well, you know, these kids need jobs too, they could earn some money. And you kind of think, well, that's not really the point. It's just that it's bad practice, right? Um, and so, so those that when it comes to like employ, employee treatment and stuff like this, deontology um, definitely comes into play. And other things like like sexual harassment and stuff like this tend to think that it's just not okay all the time, no matter what, right? Um, we're not going to kind of like weigh the pros and cons of those situations, right? And that, that's that's the deontological perspective there. Lastly, the other theory here is consequentialism. Now consequentialism is kind of like what it says. Um, it weighs um, uh, the ethical value of an action based on the consequences it produces. And for consequentialism, an action is good if it creates more happiness for more people, right? O it increases the overall happiness of everyone involved. And it's wrong if it takes away overall happiness for everyone, right? So, um, you know, consequentialism is all about um, facilitating the greater good, right? So it's very much in line with something like personal sacrifice or the sacrifice of a few for the good of the many, this kind of thing, right? Um, now, uh, uh, in business, um, you know, this can very much look like a, you know, what would you say, a um, uh, kind of like a balancing of a pros and cons list, right? Like, so if you're thinking about doing something, assuming a certain policy or whatever, you might wanna weigh the pros and cons, what are gonna be the consequences of this action and then kind of go through it. And if you find out that you have more in the pro column than you do in the con column, then you do it, right? And this is kind of the way, um, uh, consequentialism works. Now, of course, there are issues with this, um, some of which we already mentioned. There are certain cases where you don't want to weigh the pros and cons. Um, and of course, there's the issue, especially in business, that you can weigh your pros and cons in the wrong sort of way, right? Um, there are certain things you don't anticipate, certain reactions you don't anticipate from um, different stakeholders and so on and so forth. Um, but nonetheless, um, um, we're not going to pursue these um, ethical theories very much in this course, but it's good to know them and to know that they are, um, different than the than you know when it comes to Plato and Aristotle who are working with a different kind of ethical paradigm but um deontology and consequentialism are very well known they're more modern um uh, theories and so I want to kind of um, put them out there for us 
So um, that's it for this unit, and I will be talking with you soon. All right.